The Younger Dryas was an episode of extreme cooling right at the tail end of the last ice age. In 2007, a team of researchers published a shocking find. From around 50 archaeological sites across North America, all dating to the Clovis period, around 13,000 BP, there seemed to be evidence for a massive, catastrophic event. They proposed that one or more large, low-density ET objects exploded over northern North America, partially destabilizing the Laurentide ice sheet and triggering Younger Dryas cooling. The shockwave, thermal pulse, and event-related environmental effects, e.g. extensive biomass burning and food limitations, contributed to end Pleistocene megafaunal extinctions and adaptive shifts among Paleo-Americans in North America. Just like that, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis was born. It sent shockwaves through the archaeological community. If true, it would resolve several open questions all at once. The Younger Dryas itself would be explained, but so would the extinction of many genera of Ice Age megafauna. It would also explain the disappearance of the Clovis culture. It's a compelling theory. A lot of people were really excited, but then scientists tried to take the next step and test the hypothesis further. Many tried to replicate elements of Firestone et al.'s study. The original authors said that in the layers of sediment from the Younger Dryas period which they studied, they found a thin discrete layer with varying peak abundances of magnetic grains with iridium, magnetic microspherules, charcoal, soot, carbon spherules, glass-like carbon containing nanodiamonds, and fullerenes with ET helium. So that's what others set out to replicate. Unfortunately, these attempts have been consistently unsuccessful. For example, one study focused on the elevated levels of iridium the original paper had reported, but they found no evidence of an extraterrestrial enrichment anomaly. Another team, with the first author actually being my master's advisor, Todd Suravel, looked for the magnetic particles reported in the original paper. They also came up short, finding no distinct peak in magnetic grains or microspherules uniquely associated with the Younger Dryas, and no support for an extraterrestrial cause of the Younger Dryas event in New World Pleistocene extinctions. Firestone et al. described the ET impact layer from many of these sites as a distinctive black mat. Their results suggested a clean sequence. Clovis and megafauna are doing their thing. There's an abrupt deposition of this anomalous layer at the same moment everywhere, and then no Clovis or megafauna on the other side. That sounds pretty convincing. And a study several years later in 2015 also supported this idea with a Bayesian analysis of radiocarbon dates from the Younger Dryas boundary layers at sites on four continents, showing that it really happened everywhere at the same time. Except, that wasn't an independent study. It includes many of the authors from the original paper. Another team looked into their radiocarbon dates more closely after that, and here's what they did. We first aggregate carbon-14 measurements from Northern Hemisphere Younger Dryas boundary sites. We also aggregate carbon-14 measurements associated with a known synchronous event, the Latcher Sea volcanic eruption. We then use a Monte Carlo simulation to evaluate the magnitude of variability expected in a carbon-14 dataset associated with the synchronous event. The synchronous event in this case being their reference point, the Latcher Sea volcanic eruption. The simulation accounts for measurement error, calibration uncertainty, old wood effects, and laboratory measurement biases. Their results did not support the idea that these layers were deposited at the same time, suggesting that, however they were deposited, it wasn't from an ET impact. Conveniently, there are some other explanations for the black mats of the Younger Dryas. For example, one study found that soils and wetlands can accrue many of the same materials found by Firestone et al. So some of the layers of these Clovis sites might just be showing us regular environmental changes, unrelated to an ET impact. Another article points out that while many of the materials Firestone et al. reported make sense individually, as coming from ET objects, they shouldn't be occurring together in a single ET object. Referencing some of these different kinds of ET objects, they say, any one of these might be a credible extraterrestrial source, but together they're a Frankenstein monster, incompatible with any single impactor or known impact event. Meanwhile, another team found no evidence for a population decline at the end of the Younger Dryas. For all of these reasons and more, researchers have been turning against the idea that such an impact ever took place. 
despite what certain pseudo-archaeologists with recent hit shows on Netflix who appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience claim, the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis has not delivered convincing evidence, even though it would be pretty cool. <laughs>